Final Exam, Part 2. At this point, we've already created the cavity in the core section of the mold. We're going to go ahead and bring this part over into Mastercam 2017 and create a toolpath to cut that those details out. So let's begin. In Mastercam, I'm just going to go to Open. and select the cavity to part. Here we can see when we bring it in, if we could look carefully at the lower left corner, you can see that the Z direction is in the wrong position. It needs to actually be, the, the whole mold needs to be reversed. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and go to the transform and dynamic. At this point, we go ahead and we select the entities we want to move either hit the green check mark up here or enter and now position where we'd like to place this this is our coordinate and we're gonna position it right on that corner we click and now as we move around and orbit around some of those geometries you'll see here we have the ability to rotate this so we have to rotate it 180 degrees around so I'm gonna grab this with the, the mouse button and drag it up so that the Z is facing the opposite direction now. Oh, and what I realized actually is that um, it already is in the right position, so technically I don't have to do this. My apologies. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. But if you need to transform it, that is the method. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Okay, and apparently I was wrong. Let me try that again. So we get it to 185, 180, release it, and click, and hit the green check mark. Okay, now it actually is in the right position. The next thing we need to do is I'm going to go up to the machine. And for the machine, we have mill, lathe, wire, router, design. Click on the little arrow underneath mill and you'll see there's default. I have another option on here, the mill three axis Haas. Um, you could actually go to manage list and this is for the post processors or the post as they call it. And these are uh, the, some posts that it, the software automatically comes with. If you have a specific post you require, you can either get it from the vendor of the machine or the, sometimes from Mastercam themselves for an additional cost usually. Um, in this case, go ahead and select the axis, three, a mil, three axis, HMC, MM, and click on add, and then hit the green check mark. Now when you go underneath mill here, you'll see you have the default and you'll have that three axis mill available. Go ahead and select that. This brings the machine group down into the feature tree. And from here now, if you hit the little plus symbol next to properties, we'll see we have files, tool settings, and stock setup. Go ahead and select stock setup. The stock setup dialog box appears and what you can do with this one, you could just simply select all solids. Now if for some reason your um, your stock is a different size from what the end picture is here, then you could add or subtract, uh, add to it. But in this case, I'm going to select all solids, and you'll see it will plug in the parameters for Y, X, and Z. And just know if you wanted to add something, like let's say you had five and a half inch stock, you could type 5.5, and then it will actually increase that parameter for the width. Um, in this case, um, we're going to assume that it, the, the stock has already been machined to size, and we'll just leave it at that. Now what we're going to do, we'll go to the tool settings. And here you can see the default material is 2024 aluminum. So let's go to select. And then over here, you'll see that there's not a whole lot of options in the mill current source. Hit the little mill current button. And let's select mill library. And from here, you'll see a, a nice selection of materials. And uh, there we have the Brunel hardness actually on many of them. So in this case, uh, we're going to go with something very soft like the aluminum 
uh, cast, which is 65 BHN, which is a rather soft material. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now for the feed calculation, we're going to select it from the material. That way, Mastercam will automatically put in the feeds and speeds needed to be able to cut this. Um, it's my understanding that it's a little bit on the conservative side from time to time, but you could adjust it manually later on as well. But we're going to go ahead and let Mastercam do that for us. So go ahead and hit the green check mark. You should now see little red dashed lines around here. In that toolbox, you actually do have the ability to show it as shaded as well. So if you select this out, but unfortunately we can't see it too well from here. But uh, if you were to hit the green check, you can see it. It just looks as though the whole part is just a different color. But we'll click on stock setup again and go with wireframe. It's a little easier on the eyes. Okay, now the next step. We're going to go ahead and add in a um, over here under 3D. Notice we have 2D and 3D and multi-axis. In this case, we're going to just use 3D and we're going to select pocket. And over here we get to name it if we want. Hit the green check mark. And select drive surfaces. Go ahead and select the part. Now you can select it internally and basically on any surface. It really doesn't matter. And now go ahead and hit end selection. Now the toolpath surface selection box comes up. You'll see the drive surfaces appear. It automatically picked 367 surfaces that it detected. What we want to do is we want to just make sure it cuts the ones in the cavity. We don't want to cut the outside surface of the stock. So let's make a containment barrier. Go to containment and hit the little arrow. Now over here we could see you have some tools. What I'm going to do is just simply select um, the solid. And then we could select this edge. And you should see a carry around. And we could go ahead and just hit the green check mark. And you can see it's created our boundary condition. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And you'll see the containment. We have it set to one. Hit the green check mark once again. Now over here we have our it's uh, defaulting to a half inch ball end mill. Now if we wanted to cut this out very quickly, we would probably start with that and then we could go ahead and get into uh, that for the roughing cut and then later on go to a finishing cut. We'll go um, we will actually stick with the half inch ball mill just to go in there and rough it out for us. So we're going to go uh, in here and I'm going to stick with the standard um, information that it automatically put in for us. Um, later on I'll probably get into more detail but over here you'll see the um, feed planes and um, pretty much all these the, the parameters for the most part. Um, we could increase the parameters a little bit maybe on the maximum step down to add a little bit more detail in it but a half inch ball mill going in here is basically like a tornado so let's go ahead I will leave that at that and then you'll see the uh, cutting method and right now we're set to rough we have zigzag parallel high speed um, I'm gonna go with zigzag and then over here on zigzag the spacing is set to 0 0.01 and we're in pretty good shape with most of these as the defaults currently go ahead and hit the green check mark and now it should be at the very bottom you can see it's evaluating the solid face boundary conditions and it should be calculating these things and you can see it's creating our toolpath and there it is if we zoom up what looks like a solid blue from a distance you'll see is clearly the actual path of the tool now let's go ahead and simulate that. So up here we could go to the simulation button. And let's hit play. And you could see the, the ball mill going in and cutting out as a rough cut the geometry. Okay, and so with that, um, now what we can do is actually go on to the next step. Close this out, and we're going to add another toolpath. Again, we'll go with pocket and select the inside face there. 
hit the green check mark for end selection and once again let's select the containment boundary so select that select the edge here hit the green check mark and looks like we're in good shape as long as you see the preview you're generally in good shape for that hit the green check and once again all right now this time we're going to go with a smaller tool so we're going to go to select library tool and from here you'll see um, if you're getting a lot of drills you might want to change the filters the way to change the filters is you click on the filter button right here and what I usually do is I just hit none and then I go through what I just want to see so in this case the uh, spherical end mill and just the uh, bull end mill we could also select the flat end mill too hit the green check mark and then that's all we should see from here on out there are drills in there too but you would have to check those to make sure you could see them so at this point we're going to go ahead and select something rather small because we want to get in there for more detail so in this case let's um, go with a 1 16th now oh, we should actually go with a 1 16th um, let's see here We'll go with the flat. Hit the green check. And there are additional surface parameters to go through. So for, for the feed plane, give a little bit more detail. We'll put in point zero 0.01. The rough parameters, um, again, we could get in more detail if we want. Um, we'll stick with the point zero 0.01 for the step down. And then you'll notice that, again, we could go with zigzag or uh, we could go with high speed. All right, as far as spacing, again, point one should do the job for us. Um, we could get into more detailing, though, if you want to set it to point zero, zero 0.05, perhaps, uh, half that. But let's go ahead and hit the green check mark. And as you can see, that again, down at the bottom, it's writing the surfaces and processing it. We could see it gradually transitioning. It looks almost solid inside the cavity. And there it is. So now we could see they're both listed, the surface rough, and then we have a second surface rough. But let's go and click at the very top of the feature tree. Otherwise, if it's still selected on just the second surface rough, that's all we're going to see in the preview. So we go up here now to verify selected operations. And we have the ability to speed things up or show higher precision. Um, right now, I kind of like the way it is in the middle, but maybe let's speed things up a little bit. Drag that over to the right. Hit play. And so we see our roughing cut once again. And then we're going to get into a little more detail with this next one. And here you can see what the other tool missed this one is picking up on. And I'll speed that up even more. Okay, and you could continue going down to smaller tools to get some of those details in there. As you can see, if you could zoom up to it, and take a closer look, and you see some stair stepping, and that's to be expected as you eventually need to get to a finer surface. Um, once it gets to a certain point, though, um, remember once it, once it goes into the molding process, usually you have uh, people who specialize in polishing the mold, so they will uh, improve it even further beyond what the CNC machine could do, but generally with um, these modern CNC machines as well as the uh, Mastercam, you could get an incredibly fine surface detail. And that concludes this. Um, the last thing actually I wanted to show uh, is actually right here, the G1. If you click on this, this will output the actual program. Unfortunately, this is on the learning edition, thus it does not have this. But if you have the full-blown version, of course, it would output your G-code 
program that you would be able to then insert into the CNC machine and have it run. And that concludes this exercise.